everybody. Welcome to another edition of Sports View. I'm Ron Cameron. And I'm Mark Unger. And our sponsors on the show today, Binary Computers. For all your computer needs, go see John Waters, Woodward at 12 Mile. TCOM Pagers, Fred Wetzel and the gang will take care of you if you need a pager. Duke's Seafood Restaurant, located on 9 Mile, east of I-75. Amantea Restaurant. Ron, tell them about Amantea. Well, that's a good your spot. Place. It's on West Warren and Vinoy in Garden City. Great Italian cuisine where uh, Bob Page used to go. Of course, they serve yeah. liquor there. That's why you, that's saw why Bob you Page and Page there. go there. Sports yeah. Fans Journal. You're on a roll. Keep it I'm up. I'm on a roll. Why not? Issue number, well, this is issue number 36 now. 36 months. That's three full years we've been on. I think 12, 12, 12. 36 years. 36 <laughs> months. We're starting our fourth anniversary, or actually third anniversary and starting our fourth year. We've added John Sally to the staff. If you'd like to subscribe, just send uh, $15 a year, but here's how to subscribe. Just call this number 24 hours a day, 751-1818. That's Ron Cameron's personal home number, by the way. No, it is the not. Sting, not the Hot number. Night Club, located on James Cousins in Greenfield, and Pass, Pro-Am Sports Systems. Our guest on the show today is Channel 4 sportscaster Scott Wally. Scott, or, welcome to the show. Or, by some people like right, to say, Wally. Just Wally. Scott Wally. Wally, yeah. You're George Kill. My Thanks, buddy Wally. Kill. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, from Eli he didn't Wally. That, you know, he didn't do that every show. He, he did it twice. No. And uh, Chuck Wozniak told me that he was kicking himself after he did it the second time. But he time. did it one time, but eight times he kept calling you Wally. No, twice. Didn't? He did it twice, Ron. Jeez. But, but he did a different show. No, 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 no. Yeah. Three years. He did a different Still show. in the red. Make it up. Make it No, he did that the, the day I was on with you, but he did that a few other times, too. A lot of people told me. Twice. I was there. Yeah, twice. but you don't, maybe you just didn't hear. The, <laughs> okay. Scott Wally has been a channel. How long have you been a channel for now? Two and a half years. And, and six and a half in Detroit. And you're leaving for Boston, and we're going to miss you. Thank but you. One of the things you're going to miss has got to be that uh, Tiger show. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, well, George, depends on which year you're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't exactly uh, get in on the best year. You know, like Eli's there, and he anchors the show during the, the great 84 and championship season, and this guy goes off to New York for a half million dollars. <laughs> but, I mean, I didn't get that kind of break. But, uh, sure, it was, you know, professionally speaking, it was it was great, and also on a personal uh, level. It was, it was fun to do the show, uh, you, to be uh, involved with the Tigers uh, during a winning season or a losing season, I think, is a, is a fun thing, and I, I, I was happy to do and it. And George and Al are so much oh, fun. You never know they're what's going to happen next. They're great guys. Uh, they are genuine legends. Well, yeah, but they're genuine articles. You know what I mean? They're just they're <laughs> nice people, and, uh, and I think in their own way, Excellent broadcast. Yeah, in their own way. You, you have to, I mean, people tease them. Well, sure. he's about to be going to take him that's out. That's right. <laughs> they both know, give them this, they both know the game of baseball, sure. and that's the most important thing about it. And I'm delighted that they have come to be appreciated so much in this market. Where would we be without without them blowing two or three names a, sh a, a, a show? Mick Voltaggio. Mick Voltaggio, I'm fine. My, my, my personal pet peeve with George Kell is Robin Yant. Yeah. He's yelling. It's yelling. And every time he says it, you just want to call the hotline and say, Chuck, will you please tell this guy it's yelling? And but it's I mean, Vic Voltaggio, it's, not Voltaggio. I know, but it's endearing. It is endearing. Oh, it's his little, you know, his little faux pas. Well, wait a second. We got some big news to talk about. Today, Pete Rose was suspended yeah. from baseball for life. But he can uh, apply to, <laughs> yeah, to be reinstated in a year. year. That's a strange Unbelievable. Uh, I don't, uh, decision. I don't know. Do I get the first shot well, at this You get the you first get shot. It. All right. Well, the uh, the evidence was voluminous, obviously. Otherwise, uh, my dictionary Pete Rose, that, <laughs> there was a lot of evidence uh, compiled by the commissioner's office against Pete Rose. It's the only reason Rose would have agreed to some sort of settlement. I mean, he said it was fair that he is banished from baseball for a period of time. And the commissioner, you know, officially says for life, permanently. It's a permanent banishment. On the other hand, the deal supposedly was that uh, by agreeing to accede to the commissioner's uh, ruling on this, that he, by doing so, Pete Rose does not admit to any guilt, officially. Or now that's... Does that's, not admit, nor mm, deny... Nor deny <laughs> any... any uh, betting connection on his own team. Or, or even... No, if the betting game, on baseball. Bet, right, yeah, not betting so, so far baseball. as the team, just uh, betting on baseball. Rose then goes on to say, however, in his news conference, he that he admit... <laughs> well, yes, he, well, he's, he admits to doing, making some mistakes, whatever, you know, that is... <laughs> Uh, and then the commissioner who had first crack at his uh, news conference early uh, Thursday morning says that, uh, yes, in answer to a question, yes, Pete Rose bet on baseball. He says it. He says he, he, be he believes it. Pete Rose bet on baseball. No, in his opinion. That. Well, no, no, no. no. He, said, he said we can conclude by all the evidence that we have compiled that, yes, Pete Rose bet on baseball. Right. Rose gets on the... Uh, <laughs> 
behind the uh, microphone in Cincinnati and says, I never, you know, he's still spouting that same line, I have never bet on baseball. So both of them are already... Yeah, how do they answer those, <laughs> those signatures that are on his betting cards, the tape phone conversations he and doesn't. everything else? He doesn't. He doesn't. And, and Rose, since his first came to light a half year ago, way back at the start of spring training, has been caught in countless, let's call them, contradictions. Um, this whole press conference was a contradiction it today. It was. The entire Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. I mean, some people think that he's getting the shaft from the commissioner of baseball oh, who, cool. you know, well, even in so far as he agreed not to uh, say that Pete Rose was guilty of betting on baseball and then going ahead and saying, yes, oh. I believe he was guilty of it. But, but Rose, on the other hand, has made a mockery of this whole proceeding, yeah. first of all, by dragging it out, and then, I think, by continuing to deny that he had any uh, connection with betting and baseball in the face of what is obviously a, just a pile of evidence to the contrary. Incredible he should evidence. be out for life and he shouldn't even ever talk about Rose again. But well, that's another that's thing. He, you know, he's out for life and yet he has this uh, ability under the, another rule of baseball to reapply for admission in uh, one year. So Don't want to go too much farther with this, but uh, he might be, uh, they might all of a sudden you're reinstated and you're in jail because he could go to jail. You're talking now, some people are saying cocaine. Oh, yeah, this, oh, well, I mean, and this is nothing compared to Getting kicked out of baseball could evasion, be the least I mean, of his got, problems. Yeah, that's right, he's got other yeah. problems that he's got to deal with starting today, you know, so he's, he's not out of hot water by any, by any means. It's a you're, sad thing, let's, let, you know, yeah. the bottom line, it's the very sad thing that the greatest hitter of all time is now out of baseball. That's tragic in baseball terms. Now you're leaving Channel 4 to go to Boston. What is right. your duties going to be in Boston? Who are you going to work with there? And you're taking over for Don Chain who came back Well, I'm taking Don's roster spot. Uh, this <laughs> Musical chairs. Yeah, this business. in a sense. Well, in a sense, although uh, I haven't moved around as much as some guys. Uh, first of all, let me say I'm moving home. Like Ron Cameron. I don't know. Who's moved everywhere. <laughs> KSG, that, no, different, oh, uh, no, no, no. I could tell you some different stories. Different bars. <laughs> oh, that, that, that's a different you story. You haven't told all your stories? No, <laughs> I haven't told all my stories. <laughs> still got some, some of stories. Some of them went right in a book. This is only half of Oh, I see. Save it for the book. Well, you know, that same Pete Rose says, what he says. I will be telling my side right. shortly. That means there's a book coming out for $24.95, Penthouse Magazine. You know, I'll get paid a million bucks for that. I am leaving Detroit because I'm going home. It's the, this is the only market that I would be leaving Detroit for. And I want to make that clear. I really love it here. Great sports town. I can't imagine there's a better sports town than Detroit. I happen to think Boston is right up there because it's one of the only half a dozen towns or markets in this country which boasts all four sports. So I think that's, you know, that's certainly in its favor. But, the, the, but that alone wouldn't be enough to make me go. It's the fact that I'm going home. And that's, where I, you know, that's, that's the main reason that I'm taking this job. Can, can you uh, compare your move at all with what Garagiola did going home oh, to sure. Phoenix? I think there are a lot of similarities. It's, uh, they're both family-oriented moves. My family lives in the Boston area still. My wife's family is from Hartford, and that's only a couple of hours down, uh, down the road. Um, and Steve, too, you know, for, for family reasons, made the move to Phoenix. And uh, I'm happy to report that he is uh, just uh, doing very well there and delighted with, you know, his, the way things worked out for him. And I hope I can say the same thing a couple months down the road. Compare the cities, let's say, sports-wise, on the air, television. Uh, all right. I will say that uh, Boston is a much more conservative sports town. Sportscasters, and I think, I think Bernie has had something to do with this, uh, Smilovitz, that this town is moving t more towards the entertainment end on, this, on the television side. Um, the highlights and the bloopers and, uh, and entertainment first. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I, I think it's great. It's worked for Bernie. In Boston, uh, they expect their sportscasters to be more... Uh, Hard-nosed? Well, I, just I, straight -laced. Think, I don't think that... It may be a straighter. It's a more conservative town. And I might add that on the print side, there's a lot more attention paid to what we say on the air in Boston than there is here. You know, people say Bob Talbert, you know, Joel uh, gets on people's cases. Joe LaPointe uh, has a column. But it's not a daily column. You know, in Boston, every paper... You know, Jack Craig, who was the dean of the sports well, on television guys... He writes for, yeah. Sure, I mean, he's the Boston Globe guy. He has a column every day. There's a guy by the name of Jim Baker who writes a column for the Boston Herald every day. Jim Baker. If you get a score wrong <laughs> the night before, it's going to be on in his column the next day. You know, but that's the way it is. That's, the, that's what you live under. All right, we've got to take a break. Our guest is Channel 4 sportscaster Scott Wally, and we'll be back with more from Scott after this. If you're a sports fan, you should subscribe to this, Sports Fans Journal, and here's how. 
Our columnists include Ernie Harwell, George Kell, Denny McLean, Don Cherry, Jimmy Carson, Dick Vitale, George Blaha, Bob Feller, George Allen, and much more, including our new columnist, Piston John Sally. So call our 24-hour hotline at 751-1818. We send Sports Fans Journal anywhere in the U.S. Sports Fans Journal, a must for all sports fans. Call now, 751-1818, 751-1818. For great seafood, head over to Duke Seafood Restaurant on nine mile and quarter mile east of I-75 in Hazel Park. All the seafood at Duke's is cooked to order, whether it's freshwater perch, pickerel, homegrown catfish, hand battered shrimp, or fish and chips, Duke's is for you. Also serving Italian specialties. Duke's is open seven days and has daily specials. For carryouts, call 542-5400. I'm Duke. For over 40 years, people have enjoyed my seafood dishes. Come and discover Duke's for yourself. I promise you'll be satisfied. I promise you'll be satisfied at Duke's as well. That so was Duke. That was Duke. Yeah. The one and only. Yeah, the one and only Duke. And, uh, Except no substitutes. <laughs> yes, no substitutes at all. It's you know what I'd like to ask you, Scott? Uh, the piston move with John Conkeck. What's your feeling on that? Well, I don't see how the Pistons can be blamed for uh, trying to improve the ball club. It's their money, although it will, it'll be reflected in ticket prices and everything else and, eventually. And throughout the league else. it's going to be a... Sure, yeah, it will have repercussions. I have no doubts about it. <laughs> although we're working under the salary cap here in the NBA. Yeah, so yeah. Holy you, you can't smokes. just lay down... If you give it to him, you know, somebody else is going to get... Yeah, I, I question the move only on the basis of the guy's ability. I mean, I'm not saying he's a bad ball player, but he is... He's not saying he's a white stiff. Well, you know what? If you, you talk to the Pistons, though, they will say, no, he's not a $2.5 million ball player. But this is, the, this is how we get him from Atlanta. If they offered him a $1 million for a year, Atlanta matches it, and then they don't have John Conkac. See, you give him a $2.5 million contract for a year, you not only get the ball player, but I, I think the Pistons are hoping you buy his loyalty when it comes time to make another contract. And I can guarantee you he's not going to be making $2.5 million per the next time around. I've got a completely different theory. I think this move has nothing to do with basketball. This was a Bill Davidson ploy, okay, to ruin Atlanta's chances of winning the division again. This well, year. it fouls them up, no Completely. doubt. Completely, and they two and a half million way. dollars to Bill Davidson. That's right. Is nothing. Well, I mean, he okay, could care well, less. Yeah, but and uh, it so really screws Atlanta. Well, you can say that the Pistons win either way and the Hawks lose either way because either way. They, if they get their ball player and the Hawks lose, then they've got to replace this guy. Uh, if the Hawks decide to match, which I don't think they're going to do, uh, then they're out two and a half million dollars, and that falls up their salary cap, and uh, right. and then creates team uh, disunity and all the rest of it. I wonder I if that will happen on the Pistons side, though. I mean, there's there may be something to that. I my my I theory is if if they, if they if they don't match the offer, they come in here, and the Pistons are going to have some awfully maybe not on record. They're going to be also dissension. I think the Pistons See, got too many egos anyway. I don't think I so. I think this will really put it out. I up. think the Pistons are making enough money where they realize by having this guy, they are eliminating one of their opponents in the Eastern Conference. And every time they go out and beat Atlanta this year, they will thank Bill Davidson. What a, yeah, what about their own players? I think for the that guys year. can buy it for a year. I don't yep, think the guys I buy absolutely it for a year, think they can buy it for a year. Contact better play too i mean he better he not be a play. stiff not like well, that he can come in and give a few minutes and get some rebounds and muscle some guys around for two and a half million dollars you gotta this carry team the franchise can make a good player look better though i mean he's surrounding himself with a lot of talent and i think concac will look better for it i think you're going to see some dissension on this team next year and i don't think they're going to repeat and i think this is i don't think they were going to anyway and this this well, repeating is opinion. a very difficult thing ronnie i mean that's not easy to do well for Whether two and a half million dollars you better repeat they get can, one player hey, listen they can get along great next year and not repeat they don't need dissension not to repeat it's yeah as you say it's very, very i difficult. think there's going to be dissension they involved. can be they the best buddies in town and not repeat you watch the defensive end of it next year you watch a defensive let's see if the pistons are strong defensively as they were you won't see that same intensity those little nagging injuries that they played with isaiah in the playoffs They'll be taking a two, two or three weeks. All right, remember, this is the same guy who said the Pistons couldn't win a championship with a 6-1 guy leading them. I never said they couldn't. I said, when is the last time it's been done? It had never been done before. I can't wait to I get said. Isaiah on the show to call him well, to, I'm uh, to court I'm on that. He'll, He'll be here. Come on. He'll I'm be waiting. Here. I've been waiting for two years for Isaiah. <laughs> you haven't come on yet? <laughs> He'll get here. Don't you worry. Scott, the, the, the overall now, uh, you, you talked about like, like the sports casting in Detroit, but you're at Channel 7, now at Channel 4 and all that stuff like that. 
Overall, how would you say Detroit as a sports casting, television sports casting in town? You, you mentioned the difference in Boston, but is this top notch here? Oh, sure. I mean, well, what do you say now? Do we have quality people? I guess uh, what I'm trying to say. <laughs> all right, let me put it a different way. No, Ron, Should I think they be that a little more this town really air. leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, that's <laughs> weekend guy and that's why you're leaving. Nothing. <laughs> and, uh, no, overall, though, what should, do you say? In reporting, shouldn't there be a little more necessary, little controversy, or a little bit more opinions than more of the, like you were talking about? In three and a half, four minutes, Ron, you've got to be kidding me. You've got to have a little more Come time. Come on. I don't, we don't have a half an hour here just no, to no. shoot the breeze. You know, the way, this, the way television sports has evolved in this town, at least within the context of a newscast, has much more to do with the amount of time you're allotted yeah. than it has to do with the personalities uh, delivering the sports. Well, you get that an hour, an hour block, 5 to 6 p.m. and all that stuff now, can't During you? During which we get four and a half minutes. For the hour, four and a half minutes total? For the hour. I thought, the total. two and a half each, or what? Well, at, two, at our station minutes. we have this, uh, well, it's changed here and there, but I mean, you get about a total of about four and a half minutes. Bernie comes on at... Uh, quarter after the hour um, on our station and does a thing they're calling Bernie's Best now, which is basically um, <laughs> a play or two, a blooper or two, or a great play from the night before from Bernie. It's a way to, to get him on the air again, make him you know, part of the proceedings uh, without having to give over any great amount of time to sports. You know? So you really can't count that as a Shouldn't being, there be more uh, time given to sports? Absolutely. I mean, uh, <laughs> there isn't a sports guy in this town who wouldn't tell you that we, uh, we'd love to have more time. We'd certainly be able to use it. I guarantee you that. All right. Scott Wally is our guest, and we'll be back shooting the breeze more with Scott after this. If you travel across Michigan but still need to be in touch, you need a personal pocket pager from TCOM Paging. TCOM is Michigan's only paging service with true wide area state coverage service. And with TCOM, a local phone call is all it takes to beep you anywhere. TCOM offers quality pagers by Motorola, like the Motorola Sensar, sleek and elegant. It even displays your paging message. So when you travel, stay in touch with a pocket pager from TCOM from just $12.95 a month. Find out more. Call TCOM today. Binary Computers is celebrating their ninth anniversary and how they've become one of Detroit's top independent computer dealers is really simple. A great selection of brand name computer products, outstanding service, and highly knowledgeable trained consultants who make things understandable in plain English. Binary now has facsimile machines and telephone systems, so stop in for special anniversary savings at Binary Computers, Metro Detroit's business computer center, Woodward at 12 Mile, Berkeley. Remember, if you haven't got a computer, you'd better get one before your competitor does. Hey, Brian? Dutch. Listen, you wanna get high? I got some great stuff. No thanks, Mike. That junk's bad news. Smart kid. He doesn't need that stuff. Nobody does. I'm McGruff, the crime dog. Now, watch these kids. I'm bored. Why don't we get wasted? Why don't you get real? I've got a better idea. Why don't you get lost? See that? It's happening everywhere. So, if anyone ever wants to turn you on, just turn them off. It's a great way to help take a bite out of crime. Try the most exquisite, authentic, delicious Italian food ever. The Amantea has a complete variety of Italian and American cuisine. Homemade lasagna, mastacholi, spaghetti, and veal parmesan. Fantastic American favorites, too, such as steak, ribs, chops, poultry, and seafood. After dinner, have a refreshing drink and an Italian dessert. At Amantea, only the freshest ingredients are used in all their entrees, homemade soups, pastas, and sauces. So experience the best in Italian and American cuisine at a very reasonable price. Amantea, a place you can be proud to bring your friends, family, and business associates we're back on sports view channel 4 sportscaster soon to be moving to boston channel 4 sportscaster wbz wbz w is channel 4 as well so okay channel 4 sportscaster even in boston, boston. once in future in boston. Channel 4 sports you're gonna pock your car in boston <laughs> have it yet, yeah Have it, yeah have it you know, i've got the accent down you were talking about bernie and and the work that uh, he's done there and you guys all do at channel 4 the funniest thing i ever saw this happened last week bernie's bloopers on thursday and the blooper tape never showed up. Sure. <laughs> but didn't he handle it well, though? Oh, he Bernie's started to sweat. Yeah. He really, that's With a, Bernie, <laughs> you don't need the live shot. An empty chair will do, you know? <laughs> He's very good at that. <laughs> well, what do, you, what do you like most about your job, and what do you dislike most about it? Well, what I like most is, uh, is our subject matter, more often than not, is, is fun and games. You know, there's the serious side to sports, too, which... Um, you know, which I, I mean, I don't shy away from it. I think it's part of our jobs, but it's, it's not fun to cover 
uh, you know, a guy committing suicide, an athlete committing suicide, or, or uh, you know, the Pete Rose thing. Is, it's not you know, necessarily enjoyable just for the, you know, the, the, but sports is fun in games, essentially, and it's, it's good to be a part of that. I mean, that's the fun part of the job. Um, the downside of the job is that uh, I think a couple of things. First of all, the schedule is not always conducive to a good family life, which is, you know, And you're basically a two-man team over there, unlike other And stations. have been since Al Ackerman uh, left, which, uh, you know, he announced his retirement a couple of weeks ago. Well, he's, he's been, been retired gone. in reality for a couple of years, hasn't yeah. he? Yeah. Well, no, well, now, come on. <laughs> well, now, I mean, you know, I mean, he came in and he did come on the, the show. station, I don't know, around the first of the year or whatever. So since that time, Bernie and I have been a two-man staff. Um, but, but the schedule, you know, when you work nights, I've been, a, I've been working weekends now for six years, and I will not be working weekends on a regular basis in Boston, which was another thing that, that uh, really attracted me to the Boston job. Uh, so the scheduling, I think, can be... Uh, Are you going to anchor some? I was, oh, certainly. Oh, I'll be anchoring, yeah. I'll be a substitute anchor, but it won't be part of my regular schedule. My, I'll be a Monday through Friday sports reporter, essentially, and I'm kind of looking forward to that. You know, I've done the anchor thing for, for 12, 13 years now, and I'm, I'm looking forward to a change. You'd be out of practice for uh, yeah, football. Yeah. And and the other downside to being uh, a, a sportscaster, and I guess you guys can, can, uh, can understand this as well, is that when you have a bad day at the office, you know, however many people saw you that day on the air know about it. You know, half a million people know that I had a bad day, and I come back and they'll say, uh, you know, I'll see a guy in the street walking my kids, and they'll say, hey, I saw the sports cast. <laughs> had some problems there, eh? Yeah. There's nothing to write home about. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, boy, uh, ha-ha. You know, must have been, uh, gee, that must have been tough. And yes, it was, as a matter of fact. Yes, <laughs> Thanks for bringing day. it up. Thank you for reminding me. Schmuck. You know, <laughs> so, but uh, that's, the, that's the tough part. I mean, I think you have to develop kind of a thick skin. Otherwise, the business can drive you crazy. You mentioned before about, uh, about the critics in town. Why is it always the media people criticizing the TV and radio people and, and such, but I've the TV and ra that. radio don't people don't do anything it's on the media? It's to the extent that we are considered entertainers. If we were so are they. Well, yes, they are in a sense. I agree with you, Ron, uh, but uh, it doesn't work the other way um, for whatever reason. Uh, but I would just assume there weren't, were, there weren't a, a television and radio column in every you know, major market in this, in this country. Because uh, it, it, if the, peop you know, the people who didn't see you get the scores wrong that night will hear about it or read about it the next day in a lot of towns. Uh, so Besides, they can erase their mistakes. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's true. I mean, but they still are, make mistakes. That's and, right. You know, yeah. it depends, it depends we are on the live, media. and if we blow it, we blow it. It's out, out there on its way to Neptune, and there's nothing <laughs> we can do about it. But it also depends on the medium, because several times I've you know, called, uh, taken the, the news or the free press to task on something they wrote that wasn't right. And so, you know, it depends on the medium. If you're in radio and you have a little more time on the air, then maybe you can and say something about And even then the papers the make papers. mistakes, and they'll, they'll run these little corrections the next day, which appear down on the little, little corners. Right, you stuff, can't do a con uh, correction the next day. Like, for example, nobody said what the Free Press did the other day. They're leading with the, the fact is uh, uh, Sugar Ray Robinson's waiting for his next bout for crying out loud. The man's dead. And he's waiting <laughs> for his, Sugar Ray Robinson? Yeah, Sugar Ray Robinson yeah. is about to fight so-and-so, and he's going to get $6 million. That he'd be coming up out of his grave yeah. to get it. Well, like, nobody's case. perfect. I mean, certainly I am not. And uh, well, you, you, know, went to no you, went, you went to Notre Dame. That That's doesn't right. disqualify <laughs> me from. Uh, <laughs> Speaking of Notre Dame, <laughs> hey, the Speaking teams. Uh, what, what, what's happening over there? What do you mean? <laughs> well, <laughs> what, what I'm trying to say is a few. He's putting a whammy on you. The, no, no, no. I mean, Notre Dame is a, is a great institution, and I love them as a football team. But hey, they might not repeat this year. Well, they've lost some key players. Key, per key players. Well, and they're right in what they do. Yes. That's the key thing. I mean, that doesn't tarnish the image of Notre Dame because those players were summarily dismissed. All right. Um, we have to uh, take a break, and we'll right. be back to close out with Channel 4 sportscaster Scott Wally right after this. The Tigers are back on pass, bigger and better than ever before. Travel the American League with Larry Osterman and former Tiger great Jim Northrup as we showcase Sparky Sluggers in 75 games. And this year, we've added Tigers Today, a unique 15-minute free game show capsulizing all the happenings in and around the majors. Then tune in Swing Shift, Tigers Replay, featuring a complete rerun of that evening's telecast. So subscribe today, because when the Tigers step to the plate, they're at home on pass. That was me, John Rouser, not too many years ago as a defensive back with the Pittsburgh Steelers after my playing career at the University of Michigan had ended. Now I'm proud to be co-owner of the Sting, Detroit's most dynamic nightclub. 
We've got continuous live DJs, continuous videos, and live entertainment every weekend. But you don't have to disco. The Sting is also a great after work place to meet other professional people who frequent our lounge. So stop in and see us at the Sting. We're in the old Playboy Club, the lodge at Greenfield, with plenty of lighted, secured parking. You may begin. Well, everybody has got to choose. And with your choices, you win or lose. What's the capital of North Dakota? Be strong. Keep saying the song. Doing what's right is never wrong. Doing what's right is never wrong. From the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. If you're a sports fan, you should subscribe to this Sports Fans Journal, and here's how. Our columnists include Ernie Harwell, George Kell, Denny McLean, Don Cherry, Jimmy Carson, Dick Vitale, George Blaha, Bob Feller, George Allen, and much more, including our new columnist, Piston John Sally. So call our 24-hour hotline at 751-1818. We send Sports Fans Journal anywhere in the U.S. Sports Fans Journal, a must for all sports fans. Call now, 751-1818, 751-1818. We're back on Sports View, closing it out with the Channel 4 sportscaster Scott Wiley, who's also going to be in Channel 4 in Boston. What are you going to miss most about leaving Detroit? Well, I'll miss the um, working with the, oh, I'll miss my friends. You know, we've made a lot, my wife Meredith and I have made a lot of friends here on, on that level, certainly. And, and uh, professionally, you know, uh, I can't imagine four major sports teams that have been more cooperative than these four, you know, from their PR directors to the coaches and managers, you know, Sparky and, you know, one of the greatest, and Jacques Demers. I mean, there's, He's, Chuck Daly's not too bad himself. Chuck Daly, you know, uh, Wayne Fonts is terrific. Um, I will miss uh, Big Ten football. Hey, you don't have that too well, much we, of that yeah, we have yeah. major, not a lot of college We do have football, major college though. football. The Boston College, you know, uh, <laughs> makes a stab at the big time, and, uh, but, but it's not the same, and I, I will miss that for sure. That, that's a lot of fun in the fall. By the way, Bo announced today that uh, Demet this is Thursday we're taping the show, Demetrius Brown is not eligible to play football, and Michael Taylor will be his starting quarterback. Also, Gerard Bunch is going to be the starting fullback, and Leroy Horde. Uh, he's got Bowles, Allen Jefferson. There's a number of guys. You get some good running backs at Michigan that and Michigan State. I like the Michigan State run, but running backs too. Yeah, one thing that Bo doesn't have is uh, a running back like Ezor. We're supposed to end the show like that, but what the heck? Uh, like e like <laughs> Ezor that can carry the ball 30, 40 times a game. Bo doesn't have one of those. Well, he doesn't need one of those. <laughs> he can it's shuffle in the rest of the guys. He's got about 10 guys, yeah. you know. <laughs> Some talent ball too. Oh, absolutely. That backfield is stacked. And Taylor, you know, I think, was the best quarterback Brown. of the two, even though Demetrius will make the big play. You agree with that? As long, well, as, my, as long as Michael Taylor doesn't get injured, I think Bo is okay at quarterback. All right, Scott Wally, thanks for coming thanks. on the show. My Good pleasure. luck in Boston. Good luck thanks in Boston. We're going to miss Thank you. you. Almost our, Detroit. Our sponsors on the show today, Binary Computers, TCOM Pagers, Duke's Seafood Restaurant, Amantea Restaurant, Sports Fans Journal, Pass, and The Sting. Thanks for joining us. Catch Ron Cameron on WCAR on Wednesdays, and I'm on JZZ Monday through Friday, FM 106 at 6.55, 7.55, 8.55 in the morning, 6 at night. Giving yourself all that time. Thanks, everybody. Five, two, you ever see you on the next show. Yeah. I forgot my